Hey everybody, this is Dave Dugdale, learningdslrvideo.com. A couple of weeks ago, I had a real estate shoot to do, and my Tamron 24-70 on my full frame camera just wasn't wide enough. So I called up B&H and I said, can I borrow two lenses? The first one's the very popular Canon 16-35 f2.8, very expensive. And the other one, it just doesn't get a lot of attention, is the Kina, also f2.8, but it goes from 16 to 28. Besides just real estate, I wanted to use this wide angle lens for landscapes, glide cam work, and also being able to take pictures of the stars at night. If this set looks familiar, you're probably a Kevin Good fan, like I am. If you don't know who Kevin is, definitely stick around to the end of the video and I'll tell you more. This meter is going to show you which lens I'm leaning towards buying. So the first thing we're gonna start off is everybody's favorite, sharpness. And believe it or not, the Kina wins here. I pretty much call it a tie in the center for both of these lenses. But when you look at the corners at f2.8, the Takina wins, and it wins pretty well at f2.8. And this happens all the way from f2.8 probably to f10, where the Takina is winning in the corners. In this shot of the stars, you can see that Takina has more detail in the building on the mountain, which appears just in the corner of the frame. All right, next up is price, and as you can see, the Takina wins big here. I just pegged the meter on this one. Canon coming in at $1,700, that's a lot of money. Takina coming in only at $750, that's a lot of money too, but that's a lot less than Canon's price. And this is a specialty lens. This is a lens that's not gonna live on your camera like the 24 to 70. It's one of those items that you pull out of your bag for specialty jobs, for like real estate jobs or glide cam work. It's something that you don't do all the time. Next up is construction and Canon wins here. I was talking to Jared Coleman at Pro Photo Rental in Boulder, Colorado, and he said that his Canon 16 to 35s are one of his top rentals and they hardly ever have to get repaired compared to his other lenses. He said most of the repairs that he sees are ones that are caused by excessive vibration being shipped around the United States for years. On the flip side, uh, the Takina has an issue with the autofocus, manual focus uh, clutch becoming disengaged. Now, I've read that in two different places on the internet and that again is under really heavy use. So the wind goes to Canon. On size and weight, the wind goes to Canon as well. Canon comes in around 1.4 pounds and the Kina is a little over two pounds. When you're flying a glide cam, weight is everything if you're doing it for hours and hours. So definitely the wind goes to the Canon. If a lens is too heavy, it usually just doesn't get packed in the camera bag. I'll be like, oh, it's too heavy, I'll just leave it at home. All right, next up is zoom range. And obviously the Canon wins because it's 35 millimeters compared to 28. But when I looked back at my meta information from my real estate shoot, I pretty much shot between 16 to 24. So I really didn't need the 35. And plus I have a 24 to 70 that carries that range anyway. So next up is image stabilization. They both don't have it, so nobody wins here, but it's, you know, image stabilization is really important. But when you have a really wide lens, um, it's not as important, but it sure would be nice to have. Next up is the focus speed. And basically the focus speed for the Canon was just ever so slightly faster than Takina. I mean, just a little bit faster. And also with the Takina, you could hear the motor just a little bit more while it was focusing. Not that big of an issue. Plus we're shooting so wide, focus is not as big of an issue because pretty much everything past six feet is going to be in focus anyway if you're shooting at like F8. But where the Canon really wins big on focus is it can manually focus while you're in autofocus mode. Unfortunately with Takina, you can't do that. Chromatic aberration, Takina wins hands down here. Of course we're not gonna see much at F13 like we are here, but when we switch to F2.8, shooting wide open, high contrast scene, overexposed highlights, the Takina has none, whereas you can definitely see the Canon's got some purple fringing going around the tree branch. Chromatic aberration is pretty easy to fix in post for stills. And I will note that both of these lenses were on a level playing field because I didn't enable any sort of lens correction within the 5D Mark III, which would have given an advantage to the Canon. Next up is filters, and Canon wins big here because you can't screw on a filter on the Takina. And I really like to use polarizers on my wide angle lens. However, I'm not really worried about ND so much because I'm not gonna be shooting at f2.8 outdoors on a wide angle lens that much. There are solutions out there so you can put filters on the Takina, but it adds a little bit of money to the equation. All right, next up is vignetting and you can see that the Takina definitely wins here. Not that it's that big of a deal because again, in post-processing you can fix this easily for stills. However, if you're shooting like a night time lapse, 
and you're shooting at a higher ISO, when you go to correct those corners with post-processing, it'll definitely bring the noise level up in the corners. Weather resistance. Canon definitely wins here because they say in their manual that it is a weather resistant lens, whereas Takina makes no claims in their manual whatsoever about it being weather resistant. Uh, people like Roger over at Lens Rentals talks about this Takina lens being not weather resistant at all. So definitely Canon wins in terms of weather resistance. Next up is lens flares, and I'm gonna kinda give the, uh, this is very subjective, but I'm gonna give the win to the Canon because I just like the way it looks better. Canon has 14 spikes in the Starburst, and Takina has 17, and Takina has kind of a different flare to it, which I don't see in the Canon. It doesn't really matter so much how many Starbursts you have, but I just like the look of the flares that the Canon does better. All right, focus breathing. Focus breathing, not that big of an issue on a wide angle lens. You're not gonna see objects move in the frame that much while you focus from a near object to a far object, like you would with a 200 millimeter lens. So pretty much a tie there. Uh, barrel distortion, again, kind of a tie. They're a little bit different on where they exhibit the distortion in the center of the frame where it kind of bubbles up, but really not that big of a deal. Easy to fix for stills horizontal and vertical line distortion. Same thing again, pretty much a tie. Um, if you're using Magic Lantern Raw video, you can actually correct for these items in post before you bring them in and process your video. All right, next up is Bokeh, and Canon definitely wins here. It's got nice, clean, perfect circles with no oniony type effect. My Tamron 24 to 70 exhibits some of this onion where you'll see these kind of concentric circles that look like an onion, basically, within the bokeh. And I'm seeing that on the Takina, I'm not seeing that with the Canon. So definitely the Canon wins here. In terms of warranty, Takina wins because it's got a three-year warranty, whereas the Canon only has a one-year warranty for the United States. So which way am I leaning? Definitely towards Takina. I mean, the image quality from sharpness, chromatic aberration, it's got a lot of great qualities at a really good price. And Takina has been making really good lenses, especially on the wide side. I mean, look at the Takina 11 to 16, which is a very popular lens choice for APS-C cameras. So I really want to thank Kevin Good for letting me use his virtual set. Um, he created this and I just made a few alterations um, and played around with his uh, After Effects file. The guy is truly talented. And what's really disturbing is he hasn't made many YouTube videos in a while. And I provided his Twitter address below. Maybe if you get a chance, you know, tweet him and say, Kevin, your videos are awesome, make more on YouTube. Because they are awesome. And he does make amazing videos. And if we can get him making more videos, that would be better for all of us. So finally, I'm gonna show you a real estate shoot I did for both stills and video where I shot it all on the Canon 16 to 35 millimeter. And I thought they came out great in terms of the pictures. And I've really never done real estate pictures before. So I did a lot of research online to look at some really good people that did awesome real estate work. And one person that came up really well was Brandon Beechler. Um, and I'll probably link to his uh, stuff below, but as you can see here, his stuff is amazing. And I uh, just sent him a message on Facebook and he responded back and I asked him a few questions and he was really nice and he answered them because I was having some issues with horizontal lines and perspective and stuff like that. But the guy is amazing in terms of composition. So I definitely want to say a shout out to Brandon. So pretty much here is the video and I'll pretty much talk to you guys later. Bye.